need to see what the war cabinet decides in terms of uh, the whatever next step they want to pursue, and that's a sovereign decision, of course, that our Israeli counterparts have to make. Uh, but I don't think you can look at what happened last night in any way, shape, or form and, and not come away convinced that the president meant every word he said, ironclad commitment. Ironclad commitment from President Biden. Do you agree, Rebecca? Well, I think it's important that we remember that he also said that the United States had an ironclad commitment to NATO. And so how President Biden then acts if Israel does decide to retaliate and how the United States comes to Israel's defense has significant geopolitical implications to other regions of the world. So we'll see what he means by ironclad. The other thing I think is really important to remember on the point of missile defense, because you asked Lucas Tomlinson about, about missile defense. It is true that Israel's missile defense, layered missile defense system performed beautifully mm -hmm. with the help of Jordan, with the help of the United States and even the Brits. But that does not mean that, that Israel now is required to sort of say, and now we're done. In order to restore deterrence and for missile defense to play its rightful part in deterrence is that you convince the adversary that he went ahead and tried to do this, he failed, but now he's going to be on the receiving end of retaliation. That's how you communicate that missile defense has a key part of deterrence. What's your assessment, Colonel? Well, listen, I think it's, uh, it's critical that we take a look at what happened here. Why is it that Iran, for the first time in history, as, as Trey Yings mentioned there, did they attack into Israel proper? Because of what happened on April 1st, where Israel chose to take out a, a, an assassinated general, not like they had done to the 17 previous, because they've been doing this for a while, they chose to strike in a diplomatic facility. The, the most uh, in-your-face, emotional kind of target you can get that almost any country in the world would respond to. That breaks any kind of international law to take out a diplomatic facility. Doesn't matter what country you're from, we're signatory to it, so it's Israel. And this is the response. So it's, I think too many people are characterizing this as an attack out of nowhere, and they're just attacking. They responded to what Israel did first, and that you can't let that go. How significant is the escalation? We've seen the proxies obviously doing a lot of the dirty work for the Iranian regime, but this was an attack launched from Iranian soil. Right. It was, it was the first time that there was an attack launched from Iranian soil. Um, I disagree that because the Iranians are operating um, in other places, including in, 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 in consulates in Syria, that that gives them immunity if they are the ones that are launching, funding, training the attacks that are constantly barraging Israel. Israel has the right to defend itself. And so there should be no sanctuary for where Iran is hiding its IRGC commanders and where they are. Um, on the point about escalation, this administration, the Biden administration, has been almost obsessively concerned about escalation. But the way you deal with escalation is you turn to the adversary and convince the adversary not to escalate. You do not restrain your ally because that just means that U.S. allies are in a losing position because the United States is shackling them. So I would say that the best way to deal with escalation is to fully back the Israelis, fully back Ukraine, fully back Taiwan, and tell these adversaries that really dislike the United States or are trying to undermine us, do not act aggressively against these sovereign people. Do you worry that we're getting into a cycle of attack, response, attack, response Absolutely. between Israel and but, Iran? But, but to your point here, nobody is saying that Israel can't take action on there. What they're saying is where they can. Just like they did on the previous 17, you don't get to hit the embassy. Nobody gets that. It's, a, it's an international law that we agree to. So it does matter where you take them out because that is guaranteed to prompt a response, which they ended up getting. And if we go in full in, I assure you, as bad as we thought the Iraq war, if we go full in and we get sucked into a full war here, that is absolutely not in America's interest and we will pay a big price for that. And I need to point out one thing, the, the air defense worked brilliantly for Israel, probably the best in the world right now. Mm -hmm. But those interceptor missiles, they used a lot of them the other night. And if they get into an extended back and forth, Israel or uh, Iran can launch thousands of these drones that by themselves are easy to knock down. But if you run out of interceptor missiles, they can get through. They need to keep that in mind. We're nearly out of time, but what more should the Biden administration do at this critical stage? I mean, I would fully back, back Israel. I agree that the United States does not need to directly get involved in this. This is Israel's fight, but we are the backstop, and we are the ones that provide the strategic deterrence to get in the region so that Israel can do what is necessary. And I think that it should not, the United States should not be restraining Israel so that it can take out these necessary targets. I would seriously back the, the Israelis if they decide to take out these Iranian illicit nuclear um, facilities. Mm -hmm. And so that's what needs to happen at this point. And I hope that Congress 
Congress sees this as a warning of what is Iran has done, backs Israel, puts a package of a, a supplemental package on the floor and gets a vote that helps all of our allies in the region because our adversaries are collaborating together to harm them and us. Final word from you, Colonel. If we attack those nuclear facilities, they can do a lot of damage, but the chances of taking them out are very low. At the most, it's going to set them back and then make Iran, for the first time ever, make a decision to have a nuclear weapons program. We don't want that.